I love you more. I love you. I love you most. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Decent Wrestling Show and welcome to another retro review. This time continuing on with 2005, the Royal Rumble 2005 event. Let's get straight into the show. We opened with Edge taking on Shawn Michaels. Um, very excited for this one going into it. They, I saw that they got a lot of time. Uh, both are phenomenal performers. Edge was still wasn't a complete star here yet, but he was on his way to stardom. And Shawn Michaels, of course, even at this point, was an absolute legend in the game. I mean, it's had months of build, but this is still the first match of the feud, I believe. Uh, as noted from the New Year's Revolution pay-per-view, uh, Shawn Michaels cost Edge a the World Championship, like he'd done before in previous matches. So this match started quickly. Shawn Michaels got the upper hand and skinned the cat, uh, which frustrated Edge. Edge came back with his swinging neck breaker, but Shawn then hit a Luthrez press. There was a bit of awkward and sloppiness outside the ring, a um, bit of miscommunication before Edge hit the execution on the outside. Um, Edge then ca caught Shawn Michaels with a power bomb um, as Shawn was going for, uh, assumedly, a hurricanrana. Like a jumping hurricanrana, but he got hit with a power bomb for a two count. Edge then mocked Sean, and really, Sean couldn't really get much offense in. Edge was stopping each comeback uh, very quickly before it even got going. Uh, Sean eventually did make a comeback, however, with a bunch of strikes and chops. A slingshot to the ring post from Sean Michaels for a two count again. Edge tried to leave up the ramp, but Sean went to get him. Eventually, it led to a spear. On the outside of the ring from Edge. Edge looking to win by a count out. But Shawn Michaels just got in at a count of nine. Edge mocks Shawn Michaels by tuning up the band to hit the spear. And surprisingly he hits the spear. But it can only get a two count. And Edge is very annoyed by this. And he starts pulling his hair out in frustration. They fight in the top rope. And a headbutt from Shawn Michaels leads to a big elbow drop. Tunes up the band. Goes for the switch in music, and in a typical Shawn Michaels match, Edge ducks the switch in music and hits an electric chair this time. But it still can't get the three count. Shawn hits a sunset flip, but Edge reverses into a clover leaf. But Shawn Michaels refuses to tap out and gets the ropes. A cradle from Shawn Michaels nearly gets the victory, and then they reverse a bunch of roll ups. In, in the end, Edge wins by grabbing onto the ropes and getting the three count. This match, I wasn't completely feeling it, to be honest. Technically, it was very good. Um, there were some awkward moments uh, throughout the match, as I mentioned, on the outside. But there's also a couple of other moments where it was just a bit awkward in there. The chemistry wasn't 100%. Um, the finish, I wasn't a fan of. And there were some pacing issues. But that's the negatives. In positives, it was still a fine opener. Um, still some great wrestling in there. And I really loved the switching music that missed to the electric chair. So there's some good spots and the spear on the outside. Um, so there's still some good moments to the match. It's a very good match, but I expected a lot more from these two. So I gave this match three and a half stars. Very good opener, but not as good as it could have been. Backstage, we set up some Raw and SmackDown stuff as Bischoff and Teddy go back and forth backstage. Um, Flair and Eddie come into the room to draw numbers. Oh, how I miss these segments. They should bring this back during the numbers. It's just a, a nice way to fill out the show um, with some character development. Ric Flair is ecstatic with his number. Eddie, not so much. They hug Flair and Eddie and um, Eddie walks off and Flair super happily shows his number to everyone in the room. And then realises that Eddie has switched to rude them. <laughs> so he's going to off to find Eddie. Heidenreich backstage, he hates caskets, and then we get an absolute goated segment with Snitsky and Heidenreich backstage, just breathing heavily and talking really slowly, and this segment is so bad that it's absolutely amazing. So you have them going back and forth, you know, I like Eugene, I like you, John. 
it's so oh it's so bad and I love it so much it's amazing that leads us to Undertaker taking on Heidenreich in a casket match um, really great video package and I actually Heidenreich was not a great wrestler let's put that out of there but I actually really liked his character he was actually quite entertaining so he had that going for him I was dreading going into this match to be honest I thought this was gonna be absolutely awful but let's see what happened um a lot of under um hide and right punches and there were a lot of brawling early on there was a nice arm submission on top rope from Undertaker Snitsky out of nowhere interfered and was stomping on the Undertaker gave him a lariat there was a bit of an awkward double suplex they go to open the casket to put Undertaker in it however Kane is in the casket and huge pop from the crowd to see Kane. Kane and Snitsky brawl. Kane beats up everyone and then they Kane and Snitsky brawl into the back. So that gets rid of them. Good moment. Um, nice moment for the crowd. Heidenreich is trying to push the casket away um, but Undertaker stops him. But Heidenreich, Irish whips Undertaker knee first into the steps. Exposes the concrete. Um, I don't think anything really happened with the concrete, except that then Heidenreich pushed the casket into Undertaker, who was sitting like sitting down at the apron. Um, really nice spot that was. Heidenreich almost wins, but Undertaker manages to fight out and traps Heidenreich in the casket, but not completely, but between the ring and the casket, and hits a massive leg drop on the casket onto Heidenreich. Great spot there. Heidenreich comes back with a black hole slam and tries to pin Undertaker but forgets that there's no pins in a casket match. Bad looking DDT from Undertaker. Choke slam, tombstone and Heidenreich gets locked in the casket. This actually was not bad to be honest. Um, certainly nothing great but it was structured well and paced well. Um, Taker clearly carried the match and did what he could to bring up Heidenreich. Um, the Kane Snitsky stuff was good and the crowd got up on their feet for that. But this was actually a fine match surprisingly. It went a couple of minutes too long I would say. But it actually wasn't awful. Um, I give it two stars. Solid and passable stuff. Nothing good but nothing really bad either. So surprisingly okay. Backstage Eddie gives Ric Flair his number back. And his wallet to of which... Flair's not, uh, not too pleased about. Very great segment there. And it also builds tension between Triple H and Batista. As Triple H wants to go over the Orton match. While Batista wants to go get his number. Just some continued friction between them. And then we get another great backstage segment. With Christian and John Cena picking their numbers. And Christian basically says freestyle rap is easy. Um, Cena then challenged him to a, a, a rap battle right there. And Christian turns to Tomko. Hey Tomko, give me a beat. No. <laughs> Brilliant from Tomko. Uh, they have a little rap battle. Christian's is awful as expected. And then Cena just absolutely owns him. So, fun segment backstage. Next match, the WWE Championship. JBL defends his title against Big Show and Kurt Angle. Um, so I've been watching the Smackdowns and Raws going into this and the Smackdown, this was a Smackdown feud and the build has been fantastic um, because it's taken you on a real journey of, you know, sometimes Kurt Angle's the good guy, he's the bad guy, who's, you know, JBL even teases being good and bad. A lot of great um, moments leading up to this as all three are trying to get one up on each other and get the advantage going into um, the Royal Rumble. Joey Giovanni's been involved in it, being, well, kidnapped at one point, and which was actually a really good segment because, um, so she was she was meant to have a match with Amy Weber, um, who was JBL's image consultant. She gets kidnapped, Every, obviously everyone blames JBL for it, and Kurt Angle then, like, comes out and blames JBL for it, and then sees, like, the JBL's limo, and like, oh my god, look, look what's in the boot. There's Joe Joy Giovanni in the boot. But then it turns out that Kurt Angle is the one who kidnapped her to frame JBL. So Big Show would attack JBL because Big Show and Joy Giovanni were 
in a relationship on screen at the time. So I just really enjoyed the elements of good and bad guy, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy going into this. And I thought it was a really awesome build. So into the match, Big Show beats up JBL while Angle's on the outside. Eventually Angle comes in, but Show continues to dominate both of them. Double clotheslines and both over the top rope. Show goes on the steps and tries to choke some JBL through the announce table. However, Kurt Angle comes from behind with a low blow and then hits a monitor to the head and Undertaker slowly falls through the announce table. Great spot there to take him out of the match. Then we get some back and forth between JBL and Kurt Angle in the ring. Clothesline from Hell is countered into a German suplex. Straps are down from Kurt Angle. Angle slam reversed into a big boot from JBL. Then here comes Big Show. He comes back in and dominates again. They fight out of a double choke slam and hit a really nice looking high and low on the Big Show. Then Kurt Angle hits the Angle Slam on Big Show, but JBL boots Big um, boots Kurt Angle and covers Big Show, but only gets a two count. Choke Slam from Big Show, but they get their feet on the ropes. JBL and Show then go through the barricade. Um, in another great spot, so a lot of great spots in this match. Angle has a chair as Big Show comes back in the ring, but gets face busted by Big Show onto the chair. Another nice spot there. Mark Jindrak pulls out the referee um, with Luther Reigns um, throwing Big Show over the top rope. I believe these two men were associated with JBL at the time. Big Show fights them off, while Orlando Jordan, who is the right hand man of JBL in his cabinet, Puts JBL in the ring. Clothesline from hell. Three count for JBL as he pins Kurt Angle to retain his WWE Championship. Yeah, this was a really well done match. Um, show, Big Show looked like an absolute beast. Um, JBL is the perfect coward champion, which is why I, I actually like the finish. Because it just per suited JBL's character perfectly. Because he can gloat so much about this, even though he had so much help to win. JBL and Kurt Angle stuff, um, their um, back and forth was really well done. I really enjoyed it. And there's some great spots in this match. And yeah, didn't didn't go too long and was a really good rate match. Uh, three and three quarters for this one. Carlito and Batista backstage. Carlito wants Batista to sign his petition to get rid of Teddy Long. Batista doesn't want to sign it, so Kurt Carlito bites into his apple. Um, he's about to spit Batista in the face. Batista threatens him, and then Kalita just swallows the the apple and claims it was just a joke. Nice segment there. A lot of great backstage segments on this show, I'm just realising. Batista goes to pick his number and learns that Evolution is banned from ringside, and Batista actually looks very happy about that. Hmm. World Heavyweight Championship on the line, Triple H taking on Randy Orton. Um, another solid build for this one, however, the money match is clearly Triple H and Batista. Um, the build for that match at WrestleMania has been fantastic going into this one. A lot of great segments um, leading up to that, and a lot of tension being built. Um, one thing to note, I do really miss Randy Orton's reigning pyro that he had. That looks so cool. More people need reigning pyro, but it looks awesome. Very fast start in this match. And a big back body drop on Triple H. However, Triple H escapes an RKO. But later on, Randy goes for RKO again, but gets thrown over the top rope. Um, that would actually break Randy Orton's collarbone years later, that spot. Into the steps goes Randy Orton and Triple H. But, and Triple H dominates after a chop block. And starts working the injured knee of Randy Orton. He goes and locks in the figure four leg lock, but Randy Orton refuses to tap out and reverses to an Indian death lock of sorts, but Triple H gets the ropes quickly. Orton pushes Triple H over the announce table, hits a backbreaker, I mean, he's selling his leg well here by the way, hits a power slam out of nowhere for a two count. Triple H comes back with an atomic drop, and but Orton throws Triple H from the top rope. Big crossbody, but only getting a near fall. Triple H goes for the pedigree but gets reversed into a slingshot. Classic um, sell from Triple H there. RKO but gets thrown into the buckle. High knee from Triple H. Pedigree is counted into a clothesline for a two count. Really awesome spot there. Really like that. Orton hits some punches but Triple H hooks the rope from a DDT and Orton hits his head on the mat and in storyline 
gets a concussion. Later, there's a ref bump, and Triple H just stomps on Randy Orton's head. Um, nice heel work from Triple H there. He then gets old, the old sledgehammer, goes for a shot um, outside the ring, but gets tripped into the ring post. Orton then gets the sledgehammer, but is hit with a clothesline, and then a pedigree for the three count. Another great match. These two work really well together. Um, some good spots, nice pacing, um, great leg work from Triple H. Um, he's really a master at limb work. And Randy Orton's selling was phenomenal as well. And yeah, Orton was kind of protected through the injury. And I really enjoyed this match. Three and three quarters as well. Great match. Kurt Angle backstage steals Nunzio's Royal Rumble spot. JBL and the Cabinet are backstage partying um, with a bunch of um, champagne. And you, this is the first time JBL mentions that he's a wrestling god. And he's so happy. And then it's announced that he's going to be facing Big Show at No Way Out. JBL is unfazed by it. And then there'll be no interference from the cabinet. JBL is a bit unnerved, but he's not totally unhappy with that. He's still fine. And then he learns that it's going to be the first ever, and last ever, I think, barbed wire cage match. JBL no longer smiling. Fantastic work from JBL here. Now, the Royal Rumble... 2005. Eddie enters at number one and Chris Benoit is number two. They have some nice stuff there. Number three is Daniel Puder. Oh good god. He cuts a short heel promo and it's bad. Eddie and Benoit chop the hell out of Puder. Number four is Hardcore Holly and even more chops. My goodness he just gets absolutely battered between these three. Holly then eliminates Puder. Hurricane is number 5, while Benoit and Eddie eliminate Hardcore Holly. Some fun stuff actually, before Hurricane is eliminated by Eddie and Benoit. Number 6 is Kenzo Suzuki. 7 is Edge, who is in House of Fire. Number 8, Rey Mysterio, he eliminates Kenzo Suzuki. Number 9 is the always entertaining Shelton Benjamin. Number 10, Booker T. 11 is Jericho as Eric Bischoff comes to the ring. Um, there's actually some really good work in the ring at the same time. I know I'm just skipping through a lot, but the work in the ring is actually very entertaining, especially from um, Benoit and Eddie, who really carried this match at this point of the match. Number 12 is Luther Reigns, as Teddy Long is here also, and that means we separate into a Raw and SmackDown brawl, which is a really cool moment. I really enjoyed that. Number 13 is Muhammad Hassan, and everyone eliminates him. They all gang up to eliminate him. Um, no one likes Hassan, apparently. Number 14 is Orlando Jordan. Number 15 is Scotty Too Hotty, but he can't get to the ring as Muhammad Hassan kills him, basically eliminating him from the match. Number 16, Charlie Haas, teammate of Shelton Benjamin. Booker eliminates Orlando Jordan and does the spinner Rooney, which leads to him quickly getting eliminated by Eddie Guerrero. Number 17, Rene Dupree with Fifi. The world's greatest tag team, Haas and Benjamin, do their double team move as Benjamin uh, jumps over Haas and hits the leapfrog sort of maneuver. Benjamin then jumps to the top, top rope but is pushed off by Edge. Number 18 is Simon Dean who is warming up outside the ring which JR is absolutely pissed about. He's very unhappy with Simon Dean. He had all day to warm up and he's still warming up out the ring. He was very got very worked up about that. Edge eliminates Eddie Guerrero, a fan favourite. A lot of booze for Edge. Great heel work there to get him to eliminate Ed, Eddie. Um, but a great Rumble Royal, Royal appearance from Eddie Guerrero in this match. He did great in his match. Number 19 is Shawn Michaels, who quickly eliminates Simon Dean and mocks him. He then eliminates Charlie Haas before number 20 is Kurt Angle, and he takes everyone to Suplex City before there was a Suplex City. Angle Slam, however, is reversed. And a switch in music, and Kurt Angle is out. He wasn't in there for a long time, but he definitely um, had a great impact in there. Number 21 is Jonathan Coachman, of all people. He punches Chris Benoit in the back and runs away and holds onto the ropes. Number 22 is Mark Jindrak. At this time, Kurt Angle comes out and attacks and eliminates Shawn Michaels and hits him with the steps, blooding him, locking him in an ankle lock setting up their match and feud for Wrestlemania. Number 23 is Viscera with his absolutely abysmal theme song. 
Number 24 is Paul London with his weird entrance. Rene Dupree with the French tickle move. Um, he gets eliminated, which Taz was great on his. Uh, French guy and the French tickle. He gets eliminated by Chris Jericho, who then mocks him. Taz with a great line about Jericho. That guy can't dance or sing. Number 25 is John Cena. He eliminates Viscera in a big moment. Number 26 is Snitsky. Um, Snitsky with the famous Paul London elimination where Paul London does a backflip. Number 27 is Kane. He's a house on fire, no pun intended. Chokeslam City. Kane eliminates Mark Jindrak. Number 28 is Batista. He eliminates Snitsky with force and hits a Batista bomb on Kane and then eliminates Chris Jericho. Number 29 is Christian. 619 on Kane from Ray. And the FU over the top rope to Kane and Kane is eliminated. Number 30 is the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Evolution take over and Flair eliminates Jonathan Coachman while Batista eliminates Christian. They then both eliminate Chris Benoit before Flair tries to eliminate Batista and then play it off as a joke. Before Batista can kill Flair, Ray and Cena save him. But then Edge eliminates Ric Flair. Spear City now, but Ray ducks. 619. But Ray gets speared off the apron by Edge. Huge boost for that. Another great moment for Edge. Cena and Batista then backdrop over Edge and Edge is eliminated. Then Batista and Cena accidentally go over the top rope at the same time and eliminate each other. Um, the Raw and SmackDown refs, the Raw refs believe Batista won, SmackDown refs believe Cena won. Vince comes out to the ring absolutely red faced and pissed. Off, he throws his jacket to the ground, runs into the ring, catches his knee on the apron, and stands up, tears his quad, <laughs> and so he's sitting down, red face, screaming at everyone with a torn quad. Hilarious! Batista and Cena take turns eliminating each other to show that they were the true winner, and Vince McMahon orders the match to be restarted. Um, actually, a funny story is that Vince. Um, refused any medical help getting backstage back to his limo and he actually tore his other quad walking backstage so he had all the halls cleared out so no one could see him limp his way back to his limo with two torn quads to get in his limo to go to the local medical facility to get them reattached bloody hilarious I just love that only Vince, only Vince so the match is restarted, big spine buster, and quickly Cena is eliminated. Batista wins the Rumble. Absolutely awesome Royal Rumble. Many big stars and moments. It flew by, loads of stuff happened, and the action itself um, in between the, the eliminations was really great. So I really enjoyed this, and the finish was awesome and memorable. And Vince McMahon tearing his quad is a great story. So four and a half stars. I give for this Royal Rumble, definitely an awesome Royal Rumble that definitely I would recommend you checking out. So overall this was a damn sight better than New Year's Revolution. Royal Rumble 2005 was a really good show, I really enjoyed it, I had a great time with this one. And the matches I recommend, I definitely recommend the Royal Rumble, that was a phenomenal match. Um, the two championship matches between um, the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship, I'd also recommend watching those. I wouldn't recommend watching Undertaker and Heidenreich, I'd skip that, but I also recommend Christian and Cena's backstage segment watching that, as that was really funny. And Heidenreich and Snitsky's awesome backstage segment. Edge and Shawn Michaels match, while very good, I wouldn't highly recommend it, but if you've got time, I'd check it out. It was still a very good match, but don't go in and expecting a masterpiece. But yeah, um, 8 out of 10 for this show, a very good show, and a really yeah, top level pay-per-view from WWE here and with some great great moments thank you for listening and take care have a nice day